Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, I am Protego, and today we'll be doing some casting. We're going to be taking a look at a match on Rage Slave, which is a port of Neo Rush Hour, commissioned by Hit em Up. But Hit, Hit em Up is not playing, and no top player is actually playing. Instead, we're going to be taking a look at some homies who have been playing a lot recently, but have not wowed us yet with their skills. So this is going to be Bariso's cast over debut, and I think technically Dynomance as well. I did watch some of his games in the qualifier for Tyrant's Tale, but uh, he didn't end up getting too far. I think that was technically his first competition within Cosmonarchy. Let's see how things roll out. And we do not have the uh, spawns here in favor of a, a macro game, right? We have Bariso in the top left, as I'm gonna guess the Maroon Terran. Ah, I was right that time. Again, making his cast over debut. And then in the mid right, which means we have got close positions on this map, we've got Dinoman 48. I've also seen him go by Dinoman 44, and I was pretty sure he was about to do a seven pool because he didn't make any workers initially, but then I guess he had a second thought about that. So now he's gonna start to get a little bit of Vespine. Uh, I did, uh, I think this was played around the same time, maybe a little bit later, this might have been a little bit earlier actually, than when I was talking uh, with him and a, a couple of other people who have been playing Zerg lately. I was saying, you know, I, I think with the Hydralisk buff and the Iziracore buff that we've seen on pre-release lately, uh, one of the things you might end up seeing turn into a meta opener at some point is... Uh, like one hatch expand, right? You're going to expand with the hatch and then you go into a, a Hydrath Den, right? But it looks like right now Dynaman is kick, you know, get, he's getting himself set up with the gas being harvested and the pool coming down. That looks to me like it's going to be one of them classic moves where he goes for the, uh, the, the fast Larvosk in the main. But we'll see. We'll see. It could actually be like a Vornath rush. I just feel like that would be horribly inefficient. And Bariso, on the other hand, going for double stockade, he should be able to handle any rushes. This just looks like more standard play. But we're going to see what Dynamite wants to do because he doesn't have a, a K-Grint down yet. I did want to take uh, an opportunity to talk about these players and like players of around this skill level show off that we don't just have like 500 APM gods like, uh, you know, Top Ramen and Hit'em Up. Uh, and of course, uh, Gerald Storm and Hamster also duking it out and being fairly aggressive, but maybe skipping uh, the macro here and there every now and then. Uh, those were things that I thought were really cool to see in some of those other games. But one of the things that I really wanted to show uh, as of late is the, uh, you know, the, the fact that we have players of varying skill levels, right? There will be people who, when they come on, you know, uh, and I haven't gotten to any games that feature like Dead Infested, who's been playing a little bit more often of Artosis chat fame, uh, but also, um, yeah, you know, we've had other people, a guy who goes by This Is Jimmy, he's like a pretty, uh, you know, upstart player is, as far as things are concerned, trying to find ways to to find victories. I, I think maybe his first victory has eluded him or something like that still to this day. You know, there's people like that who just, you know, they're a little bit on the newbier side for want of a better term and uh, they're they're learning. And so that's what we're gonna be doing here today. We see Bariso going for a pretty, I would say like a, a smaller scale opener where he is gonna be putting a watchdog down preemptively. He's got his anchor down preemptively. He's gonna be moving out without yeah, emptying the anchor which is a situation where his uh, if he's going to try for an attack or something, that might be a bit of a problem for him. A Zork is shot on one base for Dino Man, so low worker count right now. And he's actually used his first pair of Zeths to scout out the bottom left. So he knows where his opponent is now by process of elimination. And Bariso is going to go ahead and scout with three Mavericks. We're going to see how that one goes. The Larvosk is done as well as a Circuit. I don't like the placement of this Circuit. I feel like it's really easy for the Mavericks to just kind of run around to the right hand side and start heckling. And there's no combat units in production. So if Bariso actually gets in there, no, it looks like he's going to be a little bit perplexed for the time being. The two Zeths are going to make their appearances. And well, Bariso sees it before Dino Man does. And a Ministry is in construction. That was not scouted by those. Uh, by those Zethercores. I wonder if Bariso's ever played on Rage Slave. I feel like maybe he hasn't because he's like moving around looking for the uh, the base and uh, where where the enemy might be. And he hasn't he hasn't found him yet. There was a I would say still is technically a window of opportunity where he could move his three Mavericks off to the right hand side and just pick the workers right. So that feels like something that uh, that might be a might be a thing later on. Just quickly, I want to see if we have any spectators. It doesn't look like it. I was told that at some point Smarty Cakes like saw the replay back or something. Um, I, I I'm gonna save it for uh, like a, a a later point. 
Uh, there's going to be like Bariso and, uh, and and Dynaman doing some typing later. I'm told, and uh, it some of it is fraudulent. So <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna see about that one. But uh, uh, anyway, the double vestry coming out here. So heavy lean into some healing units, and the three Gorgacores are just about done. Yeah, there you go. So. A bit of a timing here, and we're going to see two Fulcrums being added on as well here for Bariso, our Terran player. He's fully stationing the Mavericks out in the front two anchors, playing himself a very defensible style here. But his ministry is now done. He can think about expanding. He has fallen behind in the worker count, courtesy of the, uh, you know, Larval. Uh, see, the Larval Seasians uh, obviously providing a lot more when it comes to the production. And uh, Dino Man drolling pretty heavily with no military. That doesn't end up getting punished. Ministry now going to go ahead and lift off. There is a preemptive watchdog and another one, or another two being made in the main. So this is like red by Barisa. I don't know how often he's played against Dino Man. I think they've played a number of games against each other. So uh, that must be what's going on here. Putting down a fulcrum at the front gates as well to make sure that there's a little bit of a wall. I see the, I see the thought process. Now we've got three watchdogs all firing shots on. He's going to see if he can kill a couple of workers. And it looks like so far he's doing all right. Ooh, that's a, that's a couple of hits that maybe Barisa didn't want to take. But still, uh, with only three Gorger cores, uh, he was able to dish out some damage. Dino Man was. And uh, that's uh, down maybe five workers or so for our Terran. Uh, if he, you know, gets his uh, worker cues in order here, he should be okay. He's also going to have better efficiency despite having low, uh, lower quality or like a lower number of workers. And the reason I say that is because he's obviously got his uh, other base up and running already. StarCraft players are pretty familiar with the idea that when you you want to transfer some workers from your main to your natural. Uh, for a while, that wasn't so true in Cosmonarchy, but it is a lot more true now. Like anything past 14 workers is going to be excess in the main that you're going to get way more value out of putting them into the, uh, into the, the natural. So... Uh, just an example. So Bariso technically has more mineral economy than his opponent right now, despite having, uh, you know, actually a comparable worker count now, but uh, less workers uh, than before. The uh, big issue right now is that he hasn't resaturated his Vespine, and uh, he's putting down the watchdogs here and there. This mason might be stuck, or maybe it can go around. No, nope, that's a stuck mason. We'll see if he uh, lifts off the watchdog to counteract that. In Cosmonarchy, you can lift off any Terran structure besides add-ons and the gas caps. Uh, those can be self-destructed instead. Star pad on the way. Watchdog again in the natural. Okay, so, I mean, this looks pretty difficult to breach if you're just going to attack with a ground army, and the quasis do not do great damage versus the fulcrums. They'll do okay versus the anchors, but the anchors do have a lot of health, so it's still a lot to chew through. If Bariso can get a phalanx out, which it looks like is on the way, yeah, I'm, I'm going to favor him on any sort of defensive hold at this point. Looks like the rallies are setting off to the natural, so the main is going to be undersaturated for a little bit for our Terran player. Meanwhile, our Zerg is going to go into triple Spraith in the main, fearing some kind of air-based, uh, you know, counter. Uh, but uh, I don't know, versus Terran, it doesn't really feel like you need to worry about that as much. The star pad now complete. Still no Vespine being mine. Bariso is going to realize that and uh, at some point soon and have to, you know, resaturate that because he's only going to be able to make mineral units uh, for a little bit. His one Maverick has uh, stationed itself outside of the choke point and revealed that Dino Man is coming from that general vicinity. Got more quasi sort of moving across the map. Phalanx going to go ahead and set itself up. And what's this Mason going to do? I thought maybe he was going to start building some more wall-oriented structures here and there. I feel like for Terran, if you're going to make a wall, you could definitely do it out of anchors. Um, you don't have depots anymore because supply is no longer a thing, but... You could definitely uh, put down like some anchors for for walling, sort of like what Bariso is doing now. And whether you station them or not, uh, you know, you you man them or not is, uh, you know, it's a, it's something to to figure out later on. Okay, Dynaman looks to be setting up for tier two because he's already starting to saturate these neutral geysers in the main. You can return to the treasury. If you blow that treasury up, you can no longer return to it at all. Which Protoss don't mind as much because they've got artisans as their advanced worker and they don't need to return. They return like remotely without actually moving. So you kind of just garrison them at different uh, resource locations. But while Dynaman goes for the two base gas play and is setting his sights on tier two at 900 Vespine being the cutoff point, which is just about to cross, uh, we have a, another expansion in the works for Bariso. I'm going to go ahead and probably scout with that Wraith, a second Palladium on the way, more Phalanxes. He has resaturated his gas a little bit, uh, a little bit more so in the main, uh, ignoring the ridges for now. Definitely wants to do that at some point. And absolutely shellax that Quasilisk with his Phalanx, which is going to free up the opportunity to expand pretty low APM-wise. Here's a Watchdog Scout to pan on through. Dynaman still not actually using his money. Uh, to tear up, but now the anti-air defenses have been revealed, the Zorkish Shroud as well has been sighted, and so uh, the Lachizalisks will need to move around a little bit here and see what they're going to be doing. There's the Ministry Lift. 
All right, what else are we going to end up seeing here with the Mason coming in, with the additional workers coming in? There we go. Tier 2 now started for our Dino Man. He goes by like five different usernames, and some of them are just changing the numbers in the usernames, and I don't really understand what that's all about, but he's a buddy of Smarties, the two of them. Very, uh, very close, very tight-knit. They snuggle together and everything, I'm pretty sure. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Gotta kiss the homies goodnight or whatever. This gas is really starting to pay off for Dynaman. You can see, even though he just sent down his tier two, he's already got a lot of Vespian incoming. So it's gonna be very important in the new eco, like even more so to control the middle of the map here. And that's not really something Barista has been doing too much. I feel like he's not been playing to the map uh, that much. And uh, that's definitely, I mean, maybe this is his first time playing on it, right? So that's definitely something that could be the case. He does have pretty good tech overall when it comes to the, the phalanxes, although it feels like he definitely could have more. He's actually going to go into mass wraith off of the star pads, and that's curious because he scouted that there's triple uh, triple spray in the main, right? And so that feels to me like, oh, no. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, well, who needed those masons anyway? Oh, no. What, what's going on? He's, he's lifted. He's canceled. Um, well, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. Uh, there was the, a little bit of a, a cheeky play there from, uh, from Dino Man to apparently just uh, intimidate him with the one quasi run by. And then now Bariso needs to take time to fix his, his setup as he adds a fourth star pad with more wraiths. All right. What else are we going to do with Dino Man? What's he got? He's looking over his uh, rally points here. He's setting up his tiers. Getting everything going. He's got a lot of Vespine, man. And you can evolve your uh, defensive nodes in, in this case. We've got, what, two more bases coming down. So it's going to be four base Zerg plus all the gas in the middle of the map. Yeah, I'd say Dynaman's in a commanding position. He just needs to be able to uproot this spot. Okay, the Ministry has re-landed. A Fulcrum being made here. Another anchor. Well, that was already done, I guess. Putting the Phalanxes down further again. Yeah, maybe Barista thought there was going to be, like, an incoming attack. And he wanted to... I guess he wanted to, like, preemptively put himself into a defensive posture. Like, kind of like going inside the turtle shell, so to speak. But, uh, I don't know. That, that really was confusing to me as a, as a, as a caster. So, you know, I'm, I'm just curious about that. Workers being transferred down. Again, um, as a general rule, if you're the Terran in this kind of situation, you do want to have, like, a, a bio force, like, out on the map trying to contest this. Or if you're going to be transitioning into mech, which it looks like is the case, then you can go for the mass phalanxes. You do have to watch out for, you know, your anti-air needs. But uh, definitely something you could do is, is try to power through with the phalanx and, uh, you know, see if you can contest these locations and lock them down. Watchdog is going to eventually scout the bottom right strip of the map, the, the lower uh, hemisphere, if you will, and it will spy those bases. The question is, can Bariso actually get out of his base to do something about it? He does have the wraith stack somewhere. Yes, okay, he's got a... Uh, He's got a couple of wraiths, a couple of ant seals. He's, he should be able to make like four wraiths at a, a pop, and so that is definitely going to be pretty good for him. With the ant seals, you can actually uh, absorb a lot of the damage that these spraiths and spear tiths can do. Spear tiths, the problem is he's going to be flying over the Iral Iris, which is a uh, detection. So he's going to have to kill this spear tith at the very least, and then he can uh, maybe heckle the Iris from a range. But instead, it looks like he's just going to fly over it and ignore it. So the Iral Iris is a detector. But now, yeah, we, okay, now there's a potentially an option here. He just needs to actually focus down on that spear tip. And again, put his ant seals over so that his rates aren't dying. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, there's a little bit of micro flubbery happening over here. <clears throat> but uh, let's see what else he can end up doing in the meanwhile. Quasilisks are spawning. The spear tip will finally go down. It does have less... Uh, you know, a little bit more HP, or a little bit less HP, I should say, than the Spraith. Uh, so that looks like it's going to be enough. Yeah, I think the Wraith count just wasn't high enough. Uh, but now, you know, at least he can do a little bit of heckling here. It just feels like um, the worker... Uh, oh, yeah, there's an Anseal here for detection, so that's actually pretty uh, heads up there for Barisa to have, have done. He's going to force some heckling there for sure. Uh, but yeah, th this would be great if it was paired with a ground assault somewhere else. But, like, the Lakizalusks haven't moved, right? So that's a pretty scary line. This base is still being mined and harvested. Like, the middle of the map has been completely avoided. I love landing the watchdog <laughs> for, you know, for uh, being able to heckle any air units that might come by. All right, so now it's Dino Man. Again, this is... The one thing you can say about harassment is that it taxes the APM of your opponent a little bit. So, like, now they're in a situation where they're, like, looking over the map and trying to figure out what to do and what do I, how do I respond. And if you're at a lower level like this, you're not going to necessarily be able to pick up and say, like, okay, let me just station a couple of uh, quasis in each location. The 
decision to, to make static defense. It does make a lot of sense at this level, especially because it basically automates the sort of anti-harassment for you. Right. The problem being that if you don't, if you're not careful with how you do it, then yeah, you're going to be in a tough spot. So it looks like Dino Man is just going to commit to attacking the uh, the enemy base, and there are some phalanxes, but it looks like yeah, no, actually most of the force has already left. So they're kind of going across different locations, and uh, you know the wraiths are not fully on board on the attack here. It's just one wraith, but you know and suddenly you got the blackjacks and the mavericks coming in. So this is a little bit of a cross map, not really base trade territory just yet, but we'll see how it evolves. These anchors are completely empty right now. That stockade not going to get finished. We've got some goliaths coming in. The goliaths have changed pretty significantly. And uh, they are going to see if they can just try to auto-gun these, uh, these units down. The clerics should help them a little bit as well. But there's no detection over here, crucially. So those Lachizalisks are kind of permanently there. You can't get on top of them because of all the chaff that Dino Man has put up over in this fight. And you can't really... Uh, well, never mind. You can kind of get on top of them. But there's no phalanxes to get rid of them from a, an easier method. I guess you could lift off the anchors and land on them when they're on uh, buildable terrain. That's probably one way you can do it. Some phalanxes are now finishing uh, close to the front lines. I'm seeing this, and I, I do think it would be a lot more efficient. There's, like, ways to make this a lot more efficient from either side. But it does occur to me that the Lachizalisks are having, and, and the Zerg army in general, is having a hard time pushing through this area as there's, like, m you know, production on the front line, basically. Oh, look at this! He's going to do it! He's going to go ahead and land it right there. It needs to be stopped by the uh, Quasis, but they're actually drawing some fire. And here we go. He's going to end up forcibly unburrowing a bunch of them, and oh, they got splattered immediately! Oh, no. Well, that's definitely a little bit awkward. Meanwhile, some Goliaths have uh, strewn on up here. It looks like they eradicated the workers harvesting in the uh, middle of the map as well. And, you know, after all this, yeah, a lot of military units died on both sides. But Dino Man lost that base in the bottom right that he was trying to set up there towards uh, 6 o'clock. And, uh, well, the, <laughs> the Mavericks inside the anchor were able to actually get in on it now. Uh, but, yeah, now it's... Jeez. Uh, now it's, um, it, it's a rough situation to be in for for Dino Man, economically speaking. Uh, that being said, he has 6,000 gas, so we can't really be complaining too much about the economics. He's got he's got some bank, and Bariso does as well. Uh, oh no, I wouldn't station, I wouldn't mutate all of those units right then and there, my man. Oh, well, maybe he's just trying to buy time. I mean, again, he has the gas, he just needs minerals, and I'm not sure what he's spending all of his minerals on. I guess they must be Quasis and Lyralisks. I get, you know what, as much as I say he shouldn't do that right in front of it, uh, because Bariso didn't actually siege until just now, uh, most of those Lyralists are going to finish, so it wasn't, I guess, that bad. I thought it would be way worse, but uh, yeah, the Phalanx count is really high now. And so, uh, Oh, no, not the suicides. No. Oh, okay, never mind. You know what? Bariso actually was on top of the targeting there. I was not expecting that. So he ends up uh, focus firing the ones on the far right. Zethercore is now finally getting rid of that watchdog that was spying on them. The Wraiths and Anseal are just hanging out at 6 o'clock still. Evigralisks being made. I haven't seen those in a hot minute. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. The Atlas is now starting, of course, uh, in a place where Nebline would be happy, and so too would an Oslix, I suppose. Uh, shout out to those guys. Ministry is set up right below the mineral only for Bariso. However, uh, it's not yet saturated. And talk about saturation. There's 26 workers here. You need 14 for, like, full efficiency? Or I guess it's weird. To, it's a weird, like, line to say. Uh-oh, hold on. Watch out, because the Lachizalisks are starting to do some damage here. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, like... With every worker being 100% efficient, you need two workers per node, and the third worker is only like 25% as efficient, right? So the falloff is really steep. So generally speaking, you want 14 workers. Uh, max, you would want 21 if it's a seven patch. This is actually eight patches, so it'd be 16 and uh, and I guess 24, actually. So not that far away from like super max, you know? But like optimal would be you'd take you'd leave 14 on, or uh, 16 on there and then move the rest down to here, uh, and that would definitely give you a big spike in income, uh, which is kind of besides the point because oh my god, multiple ministries being set up here, more vestries being added. Uh, what he really needs right now is more vespian income, and so that fact that he hasn't been able to do that just yet, now he's going to go ahead and try to saturate it. But it's coming at the time where Dynaman is moving across the map with his zether cores and sharking towards that general vicinity. The atlas is now finished. Some stuff is on fire. No big deal. Matravel Nest nearly complete here for Dino Man, so he'll be augmenting his army a little bit further. I don't see any gas caps, but who needs it when you got 5k in the bank? All of the gas that he's mined over here has yet to be actually used, of course. Watched, uh, rates have not, have moved away from the hatch, allowing him to set that up again. Zets are going to confirm nothing in the bottom left. 
Ministry is moving over towards 9 o'clock now, and this one looks like it's going to be moving towards maybe that mineral only? Yeah, it is. Uh, so the Zets will actually be revealed. There is a Sentinel being made, but I think it won't finish nearly in time. Unless those Zets are going to the middle of the map, which I guess based on the mini-map they are. Uh, now you've got to actually deploy some of these uh, Phalanxes here. The Evigralisks doing a little bit of damage to them. Need to spread out a little bit, ideally, and obviously need to be not just monocomping it out. There were some quasis here, but uh, where's your damage dealer, right? Like these are good bunker buster type situations where you're trying to you're trying to absorb the damage long enough for your D DPS uh, to actually get some action there, but not gonna work out at the end of the day when you, you're only relying on them. That being said, the uh, convalisks are coming out. Those are very powerful units. Good way to spend your gas as well. And he's got the Zets over here. You imagine if that fight was happening at the same time as the Zets were ransacking this base. Again, you think about what happened in that big fight where Bariso had most of his army out here and all of his production stalled out the uh, Zerg assault. You know, Dino Man was in a rough spot there because he lost access to this base. He had just been heckled over here and hadn't recovered a little bit for a little bit there. And now the Zets are gonna come in here and start r ransacking the Ministry. Oh, if those uh, Anseals had been over on the top of the Sentinel, it would have actually stayed alive, and the Ministry also should have lifted off, but uh, unfortunately for Bariso, he was not quick enough on the draw there. He's actually... So what slowed down Dynaman's assault is all the production over here, and that's now slowing down his exit. He, he can't actually get out of that southern southern way, and rather than lift it off, it looks like he's just going to go ahead and transition his army off to the other side, which, you know, there's a lot of uh, high high profile, high cost units over here. Now we're talking about Evigralisk and Convalisks together. Let's see what kind of composition you can do with that. I still feel like you should have some chaff here, but maybe with the Convalisks make, causing Rilla Rokors to spawn, that might be enough chaff. You just need to actually get the Evigralisks there to draw the fire. But it's great uh, to use Convalisks against Phalanxes because you're spawning units on top of your opponent's army, and then the Phalanxes are targeting those units, causing, you guessed it, a lot of friendly fire. Convalisks getting absolutely shellacked in the meanwhile. What more can we do here? Another one's about to go down, I think. No, it narrowly stays alive. Phalanx is not in de uh, deployed mode here, not in siege mode. And maybe it's actually better for it because uh, the Rilla Ropers are definitely causing some problems. But look at that, just spreading the whole army around. We've got cataphracts coming from Mantles back in Bariso's main, but he has run dry in terms of money. Hasn't saturated 9 o'clock yet, slowly doing that, it looks like, based on the minimap. But uh, not really uh, powering up there. Meanwhile, uh, I, I gotta say the same for Dino Man. His six o'clock position is barely saturated by the looks of it. However, as he's breaking through this bridge, yeah, he's, he's only got a, like, what? Oh my God, apparently he's got 16 workers. But I don't know what they're doing. They're just hanging out. Um, not, most of them are not mining. Uh, he, he's, he's breaking over the bridge and it's working out wonders for now. But uh, he's still stuck on mostly the same number of bases. He has resaturated, retaken the middle of the map. Because, you know, he needs more gas. <laughs> that Vestry's going to burn down. We'll keep watch on that. We always like to, to watch the... Uh you know, what happens when people ignore a burning structure, basically. I guess I was thinking about this. StarCraft 2 has this feature with the, the burning structures where the the fire, it, it goes from, turns from like smoke to like full blown fire when it's actually taking damage. And I guess maybe we should do that plus a sound effect. But uh, anyway, something like that would be nice. Sentinels are going to finish a little bit late on the job here, I think. But I don't, Dynamite doesn't look like he's actually paying attention to this fight. So as this uh, base was starting to get saturated, uh, this being the fourth base here for uh, Bariso, uh, he's going to be forced to withdraw. Sentinel is going to be able to get rid of that as well. Okay, so the run by was somewhat successful. Now, Bariso, what are you going to do, my man? Where are you headed? Bunch of workers now in the middle of the map. These wraiths still <laughs> spying the space at six o'clock. Nothing's been um, movement. No movement there. Mantles, producing cataphracts, I mean, it's not a bad shout, but a lot of the production, I mean, I gotta hand it to Bariso, he built a lot of production structures. It's just that his economy was never really upgraded in, in keeping with everything else. He has transferred a lot of his workers off of here. There's uh, some more money that you could be doing over here as well. This is on a patch before we updated the uh, depleted yield so that it's still the same money that you get per return. However, the depletion... Uh, reduces the efficiency of your workers. So after a certain point, you want less workers in a depleted base, basically is what happens there. Now, the Zoryus are going to allow everything else to move in a lot faster. Stockade trying to get in on the wall. It will eventually be destroyed. And uh, it looks like the rest of it is uh, going to be swiftly taken out. Now, the question is, you know, can the Vilgoricors, the Evigralisks, the Zoryusluts provide a little bit of cover so that this Zerg force can get deep in? They need to start breaking down the Phalanxes. The problem is, where is the damage? Dino Man does not have much DPS. It looks like that's what he's really lacking right now. No Kagralisks, no Pertavalors, not very many Lyralisks even. He does charge forward, he breaks through a lot of the front line, he uses that Carapace Swarm temporarily around the Vilgoricors to uh, add a little bit more of a shield there. And at the same time, his Zeth run by is going to clear on 9 o'clock. So great work from Dinoman 
to actually breach the front line, tie up all of the forces, and snipe down this 9 o'clock position, forcing a lift on the Ministry. Good on Bariso to uh, correct that there. But where else is uh, Dynaman developing? It looks like he's actually transferred a lot of his workers over here. Still not getting any gas there because he's got so much from the middle of the map. And his tier 3 is about 75% of the way there. His Zets are now going to move into that base right below the mineral only. Interior 9, if you want to call it that. And uh, Bariso will st slowly mop those Zets up with his Cataphracts. Now putting down more stockades. He knows. He knows what's been helping him here. I can't believe the cataphracts can fit through there, dude. That's such a... Like, you you know, move the anchor or something, my man. He's worried about, like, an attack from the south, but he should probably just try to take it and fortify this position, is my thinking. Oriso, feeling the burn, doesn't have a lot of his, uh, you know, doesn't have a great income in general. Uh, I would say to cap his geysers, but the problem is he doesn't have great mineral income off of just the three bases. He started to deplete. He has not been able to successfully expand, despite making all of these ministries. Oof, that blackjack took one for the team. Still not able to shut down this mining in the middle of the map. He's had vision of this base over here uh, with the Anseal at the very... I'm sure the Anseal sees the, the Hatcharosk. It definitely sees the Kagra, and you can tell on the minimap that something is different there. So uh, a little bit more awareness on that would definitely go a long way for helping him out. Looks like he does want to move across the map and see what he can do as we enter the 25-minute mark of this game. Back and forth for sure. Dino Man definitely has had the... Uh, Superior situation, a superior uh, strategy, perhaps, a Flame Knives reference for those uh, among us. Now the rates are going to go ahead and move out to scout the base in the uh, bottom right-hand corner there. I guess you can call that the 4 o'clock or something like that, 5 o'clock. But uh, they're not going to get too much heckling done, I don't think. Yeah, they're actually just going to end up flying into Spear Tits and dying. Rest in pieces. But hey, this base getting taken out is actually a great move for Bariso. Now, what does Dynaman do? His composition is still pretty much the same. He doesn't have Hydras, he doesn't have Bactalisks, he doesn't have Liralisks, he doesn't have anything that would give him some more DPS in these kinds of fights. And the walls are back up for, for Bariso, and he's got the Phalanxes in deployment. So, I don't know, like, at the, if he had flooded in a lot of Zeths, Zethricors, Vorvicors, they can be DPS. I say Vorv because they regress into Zeth after, and you, voila, have some pretty good play there. Uh, to, to make things happen, but instead, Dynaman going for the tanky, slow but sure approach, I guess, or trying to. I'm not so sure it's a, it's the greatest of moves. Let's see if they can fit through, because there are some holes in here that the Zerg army can actually get through, but it looks like for now they're gonna, uh, you know, just try to bear down on these structures. One of the stockades gonna be brought down immediately, another one not so far away, and that will allow Dynaman to really enter in forward and charge in. He needs to break these top ones as well. Looks like he will be able to do it. The Evigralis count skyrocketing right now. The Sentinels doing their best, but being held at bay by some of these tanky units on the front line. However, the flanking maneuver from Bariso cuts off reinforcements and short circuits a lot of the DPS that was coming on in. Despite that, Dino Man's still gonna chunk on through and try to take down that natural. His reinforcements slowly getting chiseled away by the Cataphracts. Some of his units getting drawn back in a little bit further south. I think maybe he can get rid of some of those other units. No, that Phalanx lives with 11 kills. Crazy stuff, and the Cataphracts are once again streaming on out. Some good damage onto the workers. Remember that the gas is never going to uh, deplete, so it's always good for you, whereas the minerals do deplete and have less uh, range. And the, the Phalanx splash onto the Rilla Rokors being spawned by the Convalus. Great stuff there for Dino Manta. Just get some incidental damage. And he's going to try to take this opportunity to take that 6 o'clock base yet again for the third time now and hope that Bariso uh, second guesses himself because he has a really powerful Cataphract army right now. And, you know, that can be all he needs to maybe walk across the map and end things. There's not really much anti-surface defense. And Dino Man, as much as he's got a lot of the Vespin, he's trying to maybe go for Sovereleths. I see him mutating his, uh, yeah, he's, he's mutating his Spire. So we're going to have to see what the Tazral Haunt yields for him. That is what he's making right now. For Tathalor's coming out, yeah, it, it's going to be Sovereleths. They do, uh, they're a pretty good gas dump. So you can use them to, to get rid of Vespian if you have an excess of it. The problem is people just haven't been used to having an excess of Vespian in Cosmonarchy. But since the eco changes, that does actually happen sometimes. The one uh, Blackjack going to go ahead and sacrifice itself to get a better scout on what the army is like. Cataphract's moving forward. Bariso definitely calling upon uh, Dino Man, calling him out and saying, I bet you don't have that many units. Well, the answer is correct. The Cataphract's going to go ahead and uh, have to chisel through that Carapace Swarm. Unfortunately, that Vilgorkor on the bottom wasn't actually drawn into the fight there. But uh, yeah... This is all a tanking force. Dino Man just wants to see what he can do with, uh, you know, delaying until his uh, Sovereleths can be made. His Protathalors on the high ground, they're going to go ahead and get mutated. Uh, hash. Yeah, so this is the fraud. Apparently there was no actual hash. and uh, Or if there was, like, the, the replay was totally uh, lower, like, the game was fine. So this is what I said, like, there was some fraudulence there. 
yeah, it, it wasn't actually the case. I think Barista is just going to walk in and uh, <laughs> where's your army? Yeah, so this is the thing that happened where Dino Man said that he's got like a huge army, but uh, he doesn't in your natural LOL. <laughs> he's a, yeah, what a fraud, dude. What a what a troll. He's trying to get like that last second, like, you know, Bariso uh, says, oh, I guess it's over. I guess I haven't won the game. And, uh, you know, <laughs> just leaves or something. I don't know. That's really funny, but uh, also bad manners, dude. Also bad manners. What the fu- Whoa! <laughs> Dino Man can't believe he lost the game. He's just got to pull out the dirty BM strats. Great game. It was a great game, Dino Man. I appreciate it. And uh, Dino Man will- I guess Dino Man at the very least will- Oh no, Bariso left first! Wow, what a guy! I can't believe it, dude. What a, what a troll. Technically, by the score screen, Dino Man gets the victory. But we know Bariso was the real winner there. Uh, GG, my friends. That was a that was a crazy game back and forth. Lots of silly stuff happening. Uh, yeah, very different look. This is what happens in Cosmonarchy on the lower levels. So, uh, you know, I do think that if I had to try to crystallize some some feedback for our players, uh, Dino Man can be a lot more, um, I guess he can like try to recover a little bit faster when it comes to getting harassed and, uh, you know, losing grip on certain bases and stuff. Just try to like, maybe if he like tries to focus like that extra five seconds he needs to finish that task, it'll go a long way because then he'll actually have a lot there. He had a lot of, um, I, I feel like he had the tempo the whole game. He just didn't pick the right composition. And so he had like some promising stuff, but he didn't have that much DPS to follow up on all of the tank stuff. Like, I think that kind of tanking composition, that's a good little blueprint for other Zergs to use. It's just, you have to incorporate that as a part of your army, not as like maybe the main attraction, so to speak. Uh, at the very least, uh, you know, combining it with Zethra cores or Vorver cores, combining it with obviously the, the ranged units that I mentioned, Hydras, Pertathalors, which we saw only at the very end there when he was trying to make Sovereluts, um, stuff like that, you know, like, Th that's the kind of stuff that you can really get, uh, you know, good mileage out of. Bariso showed the walling strat. I thought that was pretty funny. That was pretty cool. I'm sure that can... I've done that myself as, uh, you know, playing against higher level players, and it has uh, frustrated their movements, shall we say. So I do think it has some potential for sure. However, um, I think that Bariso probably wants to see if he can... Kind of like what Dino Man, what I was saying to Dino Man, just like try to focus your attention on fully saturating a base, fully getting it set up with Sentinels and, and such. Uh, the timings were just a little bit off there. He obviously had a very late tier two, uh, and I think maybe a good amount of that might have been because he hadn't played that map before. So uh, hats off to him for winning the game. He definitely won the game, regardless of who left first. Uh, GG, boys, and we will be back for more casts very soon. Peace.